Excuse me. If you're ready to get started on the next phase, let me explain. Yeah, sure. Why not? I got a pal and good neighbor. Goes by the name Hancock. After what happened at University Point in Quincy, he's got some concerns about the next shoe to drop in downtown Boston. What do you mean? Every urban area has pressure points. Centers of gravity that hold a region's economy together. Take out the pressure points, and it inflicts a disproportionate amount of economic pain. Trade suffers, supply chains stop moving, and eventually people start going hungry. The fabric of society starts to crumble. The Institute knows this, so do the Gunners. It's not hard to guess what their next targets might be. Is Diamond City really in danger? It's not like there's raiders pounding on the gate. Maybe not raiders, but they got super mutant hordes right around the corner. And since have infiltrated their local government. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Diamond City isn't the settlement most in danger of fallen. Good neighbor is. Why do you say that? You mean, besides the elevated sniper perches surrounding the town, and the relative ease of blockading the entrance so no food or supplies can get in or out? Uh, yeah. Obviously. It's like this. If your settlement is poor, you can't afford adequate security. If your security stinks, your enemies eventually take notice, and sooner or later, they'll either demand tribute or conquer you. So, if you want your city not to get pillaged, you need a functional economy. It's hard to pull off when your clientele is primarily low-end chem addicts and drifters. There's no real money in catering to riffraff like that. For good neighbor to survive, it needs to attract a higher class of clientele. Makes sense, I suppose. Bottom line, Hancock wants to clean up Good Neighbor. Starting with the chem dealers selling drugs to kids, the thugs harassing visitors for protection money, the back alley murders, the gang activity, and the never ending stream of aspiring scam artists. He wants all of them gone. Not detained, not bargained with, just gone. Makes sense to get rid of the trash. What's the catch? As mayor, he can't be officially connected to ordering hits on his constituency. So, he's contracted out certain jobs on the down low to a few people he trusts. That's where you come in. I need some details here. I have no idea what I'm getting into. There's three jobs I want you to start with. First job is to entrap an old ghoul who's been trying to rip off Hancock. Second one is to eliminate a trigger man gang infesting the town's warehouses. And a third task is to take out a few miscreants plaguing the local economy. You can do the jobs in any order you want. I've written down all the details on this holotape, including the local contacts to get started. Once the jobs are complete, cross them off your list and we'll move on to the next phase. And one more thing. You did us a solid with that gunner job. Anything we can help you with in return? My son, Sean, was kidnapped. I'm looking for help to find him. Man, sorry to hear that. Can you describe how he got kidnapped? We were in a vault when it happened. Um, vault 111. It was some kind of cryo facility. My husband was murdered. He was just trying to keep them from taking Sean and they, they just, they just, Take your time. We're listening, of course, but details would be helpful. There was a man and a woman. Um, they didn't say much, but but I remember they they called me the backup. The woman was dressed in, uh, I think it was kind of a hazard suit. The man had some sort of metal brace on his arm. One of them came right up to me. Bald head, scar across his left eye. I'll never forget that voice. Low and rough. Like, like sandpaper. Cross your face. 
You didn't happen to get a name, did you? I'm sorry, I, I don't remember. Yeah, I kinda figured. So Vault 111 was a cryo facility? That's crazy. I headed up there once, but it was sealed shut. They had us cryogenically frozen in these pods, but something malfunctioned. The man who killed my husband, he had a handgun. I didn't get a clear look at it, but that sound. Rather traumatic, I suppose. So, no name, but the killer had a bald head, scar, gravelly voice, and likely a rep for doing shady jobs. Sounds a bit like a local merc named Kellogg. Somewhat nasty character. Rumor is he had a place in Diamond City, but there's something else. Please, tell me what you know. Fuck. This is a tough one. I shouldn't be sharing this, but it's your kid we're talking about. Look, check the desk in my room. There's a holotape in there. Might have some answers you're looking for. A holotape? What's on it? Tough to explain. You need to see it for yourself. But the gist is, back in Quincy, when Stella's mom was bleeding out in my arms, the last thing she told me was to pull a hollow tape out of a cargo pants pocket. Not the type of thing you expect to hear in someone's dying words. I asked her why, but didn't get an answer. She just whispered to show it to Stella when she was old enough. And just like that, she was gone. It took a while before I could bring myself to read what was on the tape. Part of me wishes I hadn't. I appreciate you telling me all of this. I know it's difficult. Just promise me that whatever happens, you don't mention a word of this to Stella. She doesn't know, and that's the way it's got to stay for now. Okay. I understand. And hey, good luck out there. <laughs>